Psalm 103, verse number 1, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, Brother Clint. Apiation. Hallelujah. Huh? Who healeth all thy diseases. And you say, Preacher, but I... I'm sick today. Yeah, but that soul disease has been healed, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, huh? He said, uh, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness uh, and tender mercies. I wish most independent Baptist pastors would read that verse. I'm glad he doesn't crown us with judgment. I'm glad he doesn't crown us with bondage, uh, but loving kindness uh, and tender mercies, uh, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, uh, so that thy youth is renewed uh, like the eagles. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for your presence already in our midst today. And Lord, while we're here this morning, there may be some who are rejoicing uh, because of the great things I have done, Thou hast done in thy li their lives this week. Uh, there are others, Lord, who are saddened, uh, who are grieved for the lot that has befallen them. God, You being the great God of glory, uh, have assembled us together uh, and Lord, you are concerned about ministering to the needs of each and every heart. Uh, that one that is on fire for thee, you want to throw another log on the fire uh, and continue to stir their hearts. Uh, that one that may be here today unsaved, uh, you want to speak to their heart. Uh, help them to know how much you love them and you're willing to forgive them if they'll come and put their faith and trust in you. Uh, that one in the valley, you want them to know that you're the lily of the valley. Uh, the one on the mountaintop, you want them to look around and see what great things you have done. Uh, Lord, and everyone in between, uh, you've got a word of the Lord for them today. Uh, so, Father, I pray that, Lord, for the next few minutes, uh, Lord, you'd continue to hover around this place. Uh, God, you'd hallow it to thy name. Uh, God, you'd speak to hearts. Uh, and help us to hear uh, and understand what the Lord saith. Uh, God, uh, help us to, Lord, be obedient to thy voice. Uh, help us, Lord, to exalt you. Uh, and help us, Lord, uh, uh, to certainly leave uh, in the center of thy will. Uh, bless as only you can. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your namesake, and we'll thank you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy and lovely name of the Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, if you know me, you know that I'm interested in the context uh, of the Scriptures. Uh, and we never bring a message without expounding on the text. Uh, Paul said, preach the Word. Uh, the most important thing we ever do is embrace the Word of God. Uh, uh, much preaching done today uh, uh, doesn't have anything to do with the Word of God but the philosophy of men. Uh, uh, but this entire chapter is loaded uh, with things that will help us. Uh, I'm not going to preach the entire chapter today. Uh, time does not uh, allow us. But I will give you uh, 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 what the exposition is of this chapter. Uh, we find here uh, that David... Uh, is uh, speaking as he's writing this psalm uh, and he is uh, uh, giving us some thought uh, 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 that will turn our thoughts unto the Lord. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, his personal exhortation. Uh, notice what he says. He doesn't say, Bless the Lord, uh, O Israel. He doesn't say that. Uh, he doesn't say, Bless the Lord, uh, uh, my family. He doesn't say that. Uh, 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 he says, Bless the Lord, uh, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. 
David is talking to David and telling David to bless the Lord. And can I say, uh, uh, he concludes his psalm the same way. Uh, he says, bless the Lord, uh, O my soul. Uh, it's wonderful to come and hear somebody testify uh, and bless the Lord for what great things he's done in their life. Uh, but it's another thing uh, when you're making it personal uh, and you choose to bless the Lord. Uh, uh, and David is reminding himself uh, he's the king of Israel. Uh, he has all the servants you could ever imagine. Uh, he has everything at his beckoning. Uh, I imagine running a country, he's pretty busy, uh, and he is telling himself, uh, Bless the Lord, uh, oh my soul. Uh, uh, we need to have some personal exhortation. Uh, in this psalm and in David's life, uh, we find that he not only uh, uh, exhorts himself, uh, but he also encourages himself. Uh, uh, we find when they came and they burned Ziklag and took uh, uh, David and all the men of Israel's wives and children uh, while David and the, his army was out to battle, uh, when they got back, his very men that fought with him uh, uh, were so broken hearted they wanted to take David's life. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that David didn't run, uh, that David didn't throw up a fight, uh, but he got along with God, uh, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, the preacher can't help you. Sometimes your spouse can't help you. Uh, sometimes your boss man can't help you. Uh, sometimes you just need to get along with God uh, and encourage yourself in the Lord. Uh, he exhorted himself. Uh, he encouraged himself. Uh, he examined himself in Psalms 51 uh, and he says to the Lord restore unto me the joy of thy salvation uh, and can I say he expressed himself uh, David wasn't shy about how much he loved God uh, and he even danced before the Lord uh, and friend it's okay to express your love for God uh, we see mm, the personal exhortation of David in this psalm can I say the rest of this psalm in verses 6 and 7, you find the public acts of the Lord. There are some things that God will do for you personally, but friend, all you got to do is look around and see what God has done. Can I say this psalm reveals the plentiful mercy of the Lord in verses 8 through 12. Can I say in verses 13 through 18, we find the pity of the Lord. And can I say in verse 13, we find praise that is due the Lord. I'm sorry, verse 19 through 22, uh, the praise that is due the Lord. And so this is a wonderful psalm. But I'm interested in verse number 2. Again, David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And David's talking to David. And he's talking down in the gable end of his soul. He's saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I'm interested in those two words, forget not. Can I say we of human agency have a tendency to forget? When you get my age, you have a trouble remembering your own name some days. Hmm? Uh, I want to remember. There are times I'll see somebody's face and can't remember their name. Or there's times I can remember an event, but I can't remember where it was. You know, you, by that my age, you're, you're nodding your head. You understand that. But if you're not careful, you can get so busy living life, you can forget the benefits of God. Hmm? Can I say down in this psalm... Uh, 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 the Bible says down there uh, in verse number 14, For he knoweth our frame, he remember that we are dust. You know why God shows us tender mercy and loving kindness? He realizes what we're made from. But sometimes in our frailty, we have a tough time remembering. And if you're not careful, you'll forget all the blessings of God in your life. Matter of fact, if you're not careful, you'll find yourself under a juniper tree sucking your thumb and forgetting how good God's been to you. Hmm? But I'm interested in that word, forget not. And I want to preach for just a few minutes this morning on this thought, reminding yourself to remember. That's what David's doing in this psalm. 
He's saying, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And he says, forget not the benefits of God. He is reminding himself to remember. And sometimes we need to take a step back and remind ourselves to remember the things that are really important. Can I say, first of all, we should remember to bless the Lord. That's what David does throughout this psalm. Uh, throughout this psalm, you find the word, bless the Lord. Mm, can I say, you find it verse 1 and 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, all is within me, bless His holy name, bless the Lord, O my soul. And we find it again in verse 22, bless the Lord, all His works and all His places of His dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. And several other times in this wonderful psalm, he is talking about blessing the Lord. Now, unfortunately, Brother Tommy, most of the time, our thought process is, Lord, bless me. And see, when we want Him to bless us, uh, we want Him to bless our pocketbooks. We want Him to bless our refrigerator and what all the food's in there. We want Him to bless our gas tank. We want Him to bless for paying our bills. We want uh, Him to bless our health. We want What we're really asking for is an easy life. And most of the time when we talk to God, we just bring Him a shopping list of things we want Him to bless us with. Hmm? When's the last time you blessed the Lord? Amen. Say, what do I have to offer God? He owns it all. Well, you've, you've missed the whole context of what the word blessing means. Can I say the word bless means to live in an act of adoration. When we say bless the Lord, as David is saying here, what we are saying is I am going to live my life in an act of adoration to God. When we talk about the blessings of the Lord, what they really are, Miss Cinda, is an act of the Lord showing how much He loves us. The greatest blessing He gave on Calvary for you and I. He showed us that He loved us with an everlasting love uh, when He gave His darling Son to bleed and die for our sins. Uh, and God, uh, uh, what He wants from us uh, is to bless Him by living a life uh, that shows Him we adore Him, uh, that we truly uh, love Him uh, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our being. We let Him know we love Him. Uh, let me ask you a question. This week, have you lived a life that showed Jesus you loved Him? Because that's what blessing the Lord is all about. Can I say, when He has a sunset that is so beautiful, He's just reminding you how much He loves you. Uh, and everything around here that He has created, He has created, you know one day we're going to own everything that He's done? All because He has blessed us through salvation. And He shows us every day how much He loves us. Shouldn't we, in turn, bless Him? David's reminding himself to remember to bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless the Lord. And whether I'm uh, uh, attending the kingly affairs, uh, 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 whether I'm having state dinners, uh, 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 whether I'm sitting uh, on the battlefield, uh, it doesn't matter all that is within me. Uh, help me to adore the Lord and live accordingly. Uh, can I say? We ought to bless the Lord. We need to remind ourselves to remember to bless the Lord because you can get so busy in your life that you live a life that doesn't bless the Lord. I'm not talking about living a wicked life. I'm just talking about being busy and just not letting Jesus know through your life how much you love Him. Can I say we need to remember the benefits of God? Isn't that not what He says in verse number 2? Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget, forget not all His benefits. Hmm? Listen, Brother John, when I got saved, all I knew is I got saved. I had no idea what came with it. Hmm? Christian just became a deputy sheriff this week. He had no idea all the benefits. He can shoot whenever he wants in free ammo. What a benefit. What a blessing. Huh? Do you remember when you got that job, you didn't realize all the benefits came with the job? Hmm? Huh? But can I say, when I got saved, 
I just knew I'd got saved. I just knew that the burden was lifted. I just knew that uh, uh, that love of God that I'd never known before, I had no idea all that came with it. Uh, I, could I say I've been saved 45 years? I'm just now starting to get a little understanding uh, of all that came with it. Uh, hey, I got Jesus uh, and all of heaven too. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, we should not forget the benefits of God. Do you know what that word benefit means? Treatment. How God treats us. Hmm? That word benefit means improvements. And how God has improved us. Some of you here today, if you're not careful, you'll forget what garbage dump God found you in. Uh, uh, you think you've been this way all your life. Uh, but you haven't. Uh, you used to be the off-scour of the world. Uh, you used to be some Gentile dog, had no right to God. Uh, but God came to where you was, uh, and He saved your never-dying soul. Uh, he adopted you in the family of God, uh, made you a joint heir to the throne of Christ. Uh, hey, He robed you in righteousness, uh, put a ring on your finger, shoes on your feet, praise in your mouth. Uh, he's improved your life. Uh, I was thinking when Brother James sang that song about them dreams not met. Do you ever have dreams? You know what's precious about these kids? They tell you what they want to be when they grow up. Remember when you was that? Remember when you wanted to be an astronaut or fireman or police officer or president? <laughs> you can have that job. Huh? Remember all those dreams you had and then life hit you? And things don't always work out the way you hoped that they would. I don't talk about this much, but there was a time I, I had one desire, to play professional baseball. Now, I won't go into all of it, but I will say this. I was the number one hitting shortstop in the state of Ohio. I outhit Barry Larkin by 50 points, and he's in the Hall of Fame. There was no doubt that I was going to be a professional ball player. Started when I was four years old and never lost sight of that. Until one day I was pitching against Todd Benzinger, who went on to catch the last out for the Cincinnati Reds, 1990 World Series, last time they had a World Series team. I was pitching against him, and boom, second pitch, my shoulder popped, and my baseball career ended. It was back before Tommy John surgery. It was back before they did anything for you. They just patted you on your back and said, well, it could have been a great career. Hmm? But you see, Chief, God knew. If I'd got caught up in all that baseball, I'd never been fit to be used to him. I'd have never had the family I've got. I'd never had the call of God on my life. Uh, I'd never been privileged to be the pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church. Hey, I want to tell you something. Uh, hey, my life has been improved. Uh, the benefits of God and how He's treated me uh, far outweigh how I've treated yeah. Him. Uh, oh, I thought about the benefits of salvation, uh, the benefits of security. Uh, I don't have to go to bed at night worrying about dying and going to hell. Uh, uh, the benefits of having the Word of God, the Scriptures... Uh, the benefits of the sanctuary and meeting with God's people uh, the benefits of the saints you yourselves uh, hey some of my dearest friends are here today uh, what a blessing uh, hey listen the benefits uh, of the of serenity uh, of knowing the peace of God uh, and knowing he's gone to prepare a place for us uh, we need to remember sometimes the benefits of God Oh, don't, 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 don't misunderstand. Ben, a lot of times I think, boy, if I'd been making $25 million a year like Joey Votto, hallelujah, huh? And trust me, Miss Annette would like me making $25 million a year like Joey Votto. Huh? But I wouldn't trade a thing for all the benefits of God. Mm. We need to remember to bless the Lord. We need to remember, we've got to remind ourselves of this sometimes. The benefits of God. We need to remind ourselves of the biography of God. Look in verse number 8. The Bible says this, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, 
and plenteous in mercy. Look at verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto his children's children. We need to remember the biography of God, and it's this. God is gracious and merciful to us. He is plenteous in mercy. We need to remember that, Brother James, because sometimes we forget how merciful God is, and we want to look around and judge people. I'm glad God's a God of mercy. Can I help you something? i got a 24-hour day job dealing with the guy I look at in the mirror every morning. I don't have time to look and judge your life, huh? But I'm glad God's merciful. Hey, God's shown me mercy, huh? And I know God's shown you mercy, huh? And when I remember the mercy of God and His long-suffering, huh? Hey, it causes me to be merciful to those that maybe I think just aren't where they should be. And by the way, you don't even know your own heart. So shame on you if you try to judge somebody else's heart. Yeah, right. hmm? right. I just thank God for mercy. Amen. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, you know what mercy is? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, if we got what we deserve, we'd all already be in hell. I'm glad I'm not going to hell. I'm glad for the mercy of God. I'm glad He is merciful. I'm glad, hallelujah, He's gracious. He's slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. I'm glad God doesn't have a temper like I got. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm glad I'm not God. There'd be lightning bolts everywhere. Boom, boom, boom. Truck driver in the left-hand lane, me going up a hill. Boom, out of my way. This way it be. I'm glad God's slow to anger. Uh I don't know about you, sometimes I react before I think. I'm glad God never does that. I'm glad He sees the end from the beginning. I'm glad He's still working on us and He's slow to anger. I'm glad He remembers we're dust and He just knows He needs a little more oil. He needs a little more water. Uh, oil, a picture of the Spirit. Water, a picture of the Word. Uh, just needs to put a little more on us to get us to where we need to be. I'm glad He's merciful. Uh, I'm glad He winks at our ignorance. You ever do anything stupid? We do every day. God winks at that. And he's slow to anger, but plenteous. And we need to remember the biography of God. Because if we're not careful, we'll start playing God. And that's a dangerous place to be. You know what the Bible says? We're not to judge any, other, any man's, we're not to judge another man's servant. And we're all servants to the master, so we're not to judge anybody. We're to take on the characteristics of our master. And we're to show mercy. Amen. Can I say this? We're to be, remind ourselves to remember the burden of God. Can I say? God is burden. If I had time, I'd take you over there in Jeremiah chapter number 10 and show you where God says, Woe unto me, for my wound is grievous. God, who is a sovereign God, who is in glory, who is the Lord of lords and King of kings, God, who is omnipotent, who is omniscient, who is uh, 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 omnipresent, has burdens today. Say, what are the burdens of God? Can I say, first of all, unrepented sinners. Hmm. Unregenerated sinners. That's a burden to God. God is interested in every man, woman, boy, and girl to be saved. Jesus tasted death for every man. And when people aren't saved, that burdens God. And when people hear the gospel and reject Him, that burdens God. Can I say this? God is burdened about unremoved saints. When we stay where we stay and we don't remove ourselves from our paths and get on His plan. Hmm. Can I say, I don't know about anywhere else, but I know about Emmanuel Baptist Church. We've had enough preaching in the last 20 years. We should have won the world. But we come, we enjoy the preaching, and then we go back to our lives. We're not moved. God, help us to be moved by the burden of God. And then can I say this? God is burdened by unrevived sanctuaries. When we remember the benefits of God, it ought to revive us and stir us and cause us to go out 
and win people to God. Hmm? We ought to have so much zeal when we leave this place. Hmm? Yeah. Now, unfortunately, today's generation don't know anything about what I'm talking about. But back in our big generation, Big Doug, we played ball. The coach would chew us up one side down the other. But then he would inspire us that when we hit the field, we was ready to rip somebody's head off. Hmm. We'd get fired up. Nowadays, they all get a juice box and they're all told they're all special. Hmm. See, my generation, we had one thing in common. We all hated to lose. Now they don't even keep score. Hmm. You know who is keeping score? The kids. They always tell you what score is. Well, see, that's filtered into our churches. We are so passive that we don't realize people are dying and going to hell. Who's going to win them? We should win them. We come to the house of God, we ought to get so stirred up and fired up, we're ready to go out there and tell somebody about Jesus. You say, preacher, I can't win the world, but you can win one. Amen. God help us to remember the burden of God. We get so busy, we think God's just there to help our burdens. But when you get involved in the burden of God, you'll find out your burden is light. I'll say this, I'll be done. We need to remind ourselves to remember the beckoning of God. Hmm. Can I say God beckons or calls us to worship? Shame on us when we don't worship. Can I say worship is a verb? That means more than just show up. That means to take part in. Hmm. God beckons us to walk with Him. Do you realize the God of glory desires one thing of you, and that's for you to walk with Him? You to have an intimate, personal relationship with Him. How much do you talk to Him? How much do you walk with Him? How much do you think on Him? Hmm? Listen, Miss Nett and I have been married 30 years. There's not a day goes by, I don't tell her I love her. Not a day goes by, I don't talk to her. Not a day goes by, I don't want to be with her. And I love her. But can I say, she didn't die for me. I love Jesus more. And I need to talk with him every day. I need to tell him I love him every day. I desire to be around him every day. Hmm? God beckons us to do that. Hmm? And can I say this? He beckons us to witness to others. Hmm? Hey, when you get them grandbabies, you don't have any problem showing off them pictures. Hmm? You get a new car, new house, new dress. Huh? Anything new, you already showed off. Some of you get operation, you want to show me your scars. No thanks, you can keep it yourself. Not interested. Hmm? Uh, how come we don't tell folks about Jesus because it's not new anymore? But yet his mercies are renewed every day. And we're a new man in Christ every day. That's why we need to remind ourselves to remember what we really have in Christ. Hmm? Let me ask you this. How long has it been since you remembered how great Jesus really is? And friend, somewhere on them sticky notes of your life and all the things that you've got to get done on the day, put on there, remind yourself to remember how great Jesus really is. When you put him first at your list, the rest of your list will go so much smoother. And he'll be so much sweeter. And you're like, David, to bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. How long has it been since you blessed the Lord? Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. While he's coming, let's pray. Father, 
forgive me of the times I get so wrapped up in this world or so wrapped up in myself that I forget to bless the Lord. God, give us a burden to bless you with our lives, with our lips. God, with being a light in this dark, destitute world. Now, Father, there's no telling the needs here today. But I pray folks would take time to remember what great things thou hast done. Some people might need to get in the altar and thank you for your benefits. Some might need to get in the altar and tell you they're sorry that it's been so long since they've thanked you and thought about your benefits. Some may be burdened this morning with a heavy burden. They just need to come and give that burden to you. And then, Father, there may be some here today that's lost without Christ. Lord, today's the day of salvation. They want to come and give their heart and life to you. Lord, I don't know the need, but I know that Jesus is the answer. So, Father, I pray folks would come. Even folks that don't even understand would come. Let us take the Bible and show them what it takes to truly be saved. Now, Father, get glory during this invitation. Maybe somebody would be burdened to go put their arms around somebody and tell them, thank you for being a friend. Or thank you, you're one of the benefits God's put in my life. You just... Uh, never know what folks are going through here, Lord, and you might just need to touch somebody to go and be a blessing to somebody. Lord, whatever's needing this invitation, Lord, just uh, I pray the sweet spirit of God wouldn't be grieved or quenched, and you'd get glory, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.